Hi guys and gals, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today I have a highly requested video for you guys and I'm excited to do this and um, if you followed my channel over the last four months or so, uh, you'll notice there were a couple milestones, uh, at least in my mind. And um, one of the milestones was the very first first impression I ever did and it was on a fragrance from the house of Crizia and it's a fragrance called Tietro alla Scala. Now, um, there are two versions here that I have in my hand. One is the Eau de Parfum, which if you watched my unboxing from Anuj, you will see that um, you saw two of these, and I did get two. These are 25 ml uh, bottles. I really like the uh, bottle design. This is a 50 ml splash that I scored from eBay uh, a couple months back, two or three months back, and I think I paid 35 or 40 bucks for this, uh, and I did a first impression, and this fragrance completely knocked me out of my chair. Uh, I have very rarely been moved like this. In fact, I was listening to um, Sultan Pasha speak, uh, he did an interview with Wasp from the Lofts uh, yesterday, and he talked about being a man of extremes and um, really needing to find things that move him, and perfumery was, was one of the things that did that for him. And for some reason, I instantly thought of this fragrance, Teatro alla Scala, and I also realized, oh no, it's April, and I'm not going to be able to wear this anytime soon because this is a resinous, heavy fragrance the uh not in smell and if you if you go watch my first impression video it might give you a little bit more insight into it um but not so much in smell but in feel there's two fragrances that come to mind one is YSL's Opium from 1977 and you could do the EDT or you could do the Secret to Parfum from 92 both of those have the same um in my mind, it has the same grandness. Grandness isn't really a word. Opulence, if you will. But don't think opulence like, um, I'm not talking about opulence like gold and myrrh and, you know, silver and, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking about real life opulence. I'm talking about the opulence of a time, of a, of a thought, of a place, right? That's what this fragrance gives me. Um, and very few fragrances, and I've sniffed probably over a thousand fragrances, definitely probably over a thousand, I have all, more than half of that here in my own collection, and I know I've tested a lot more than that, and very, very few fragrances moved me the way that this fragrance does. This fragrance just touches me, um, in a way that, um, you know, it, it, it definitely, um, how could I even describe the way that it makes me feel? It makes me feel like I'm part of a long lost time. Like it, it's a, it's an era that doesn't exist anymore. It's a, it's a mythical place, let's say. And that myth, that mythical place in time, that idea is gone. It's in the past. It's, uh, um, you know, if you've seen some of my books on the other side of the display, you'll know that I'm a big Stephen King fan. And in one of his books, there's a seven book series called The Dark Tower, which is one of my favorite series of books like that. I forget what that's called. Um, but in The Dark Tower, the world has moved on. OK, so the world has just moved on and it's kind of gone its own way. The past is gone. And, and this reminds me of that place. Um, not necessarily from the Dark Tower, but of a time and place from the past. Um, because this fragrance is so 1980s. Um, and, and the other fragrance from the 1980s that this reminds me of is a fragrance called Poison. And don't think about smell. I'm not talking about smell. I named two fragrances, Opium and Poison, because of the grandness. I, I know that's not a word, but again, the opulence the those are very large perfumes they are not uh perfumes that you put on and you know you hope no one smells you if you put on poison especially vintage poison or if you put on vintage opium everybody in the room will smell you it is when you want to make an entrance 
It's when you want to be noticed by everyone. You know, it's when you almost want to be the star of the show. And this fragrance does that for me. Uh, it recreates that, um, you know, very few fragrances hold that place in my, in my mind. Um, there are some very grand masculine fragrances as well. Um, you know, you probably see some of them back here. Uh, some huge fragrances from Amouage. Uh, Interlude Man, the original when it first came out, was just an absolute beast. You know, that kind of level of, um, that kind of level of, uh, projection and intensity and, you know, I don't really care so much about compliments necessarily, um, but I do care about the way the perfume is made. And what's so special about this fragrance to me is it is in the same ballpark as some of those other very grand perfumes. You know, think about like a grand ballroom with a huge chandelier. You go to other ballrooms, they have chandeliers, but they're not as huge as the grand ballroom, right? That's what I think about with this fragrance. It is the, uh, it is like the, the most beautiful hall ballroom you could ever imagine uh, if, if, uh, if it was if it was a perfume and it actually is a opera house Teatro alla Scala is uh, an opera house in Milan that goes back hundreds of years uh, and um, it, it really encapsulates that well unbelievably well I mean who could how can you make a um, a perfume smell like that that like that uh, like an opera house right uh, it has that it has the uh, it has the, um, I was going to say the fat lady singing, but, uh, that's probably politically incorrect. But if you're on my channel, you're going to get politically incorrect here. So think about the fat lady singing on the opera house. Um, and her voice is just booming projection. Everyone in the opera house can hear how beautiful her voice is. It encapsulates that. Um, and so initially I got the EDT. I did a first impression. And I shot myself in the foot because I said I love this fragrance. And to my surprise, you guys actually went out and bought it. And then I went, oh no, I want a backup bottle. And I looked and they were all gone. Um, so luckily, I'm friends with a guy you've uh, heard a couple times on this channel, Anuj from Enchante Perfumes. And he has these uh, EDPs. I think he also has the EDT. I've got the box here too. I normally don't have the box, but this is what the box looks like. Um, nothing, you know, mind blowing, but uh, you can see the um, you can see the short ingredient list right here. Um, and I don't know who the perfumer is, that's the thing, but the House of Crezia worked with some amazing perfumers in the past. You're talking about perfumers like uh, Dominique Ropion, Christine Nagel, stuff like that. They use big names, but they don't announce who actually made their perfumes. Um, so what I did, because I started to get a lot of questions, hey, which version did you buy? Did you buy the EDT? Did you buy the EDP? Well, I initially bought the EDT and I loved it. And so I figured, you know what? I want to do a comparison video for you guys. So I bought the EDP and I'm wearing the EDP on my left hand uh, and I'm wearing the EDT on my right hand. And so let's go through the fragrance and let's go through the notes. By the way, Parfumo.net has both the EDP and the EDT listed as a, you know, searchable perfume. Uh, Fra Fragrantica only has just Teatro alla Scala. They don't list a concentration. Base Notes only has Teatro alla Scala. They don't list a concentration. But if you go to Parfumo and look at the two, you'll realize that there are absolutely no differences in the note breakdown. They're identical, okay? So before I really get into this, I want to say that, um, you know, the, the differences that I'm going to talk about are minute. There's very little difference between them. Um, they are very, very similar. And Eau de Parfum is supposed to just be like a heavier concentration. Um, it has more perfume oil, stuff like that, right? And, and that's really what you get in this. The fragrances are very, very similar. It was, it wasn't like it is today in the 1980s. You know, brands didn't release a Eau de Parfum or Parfum or Extra that was like a completely different fragrance. No, this was Teatro alla Scala. It's both Teatro alla Scala. Uh, one is the Eau de Toilette and one is the Eau de Parfum. Now, 
Uh, before we get into the notes, there is one thing I want to say. I mentioned that this is a grand perfume, okay? And don't think the Eau de Toilette is light. I mean, it doesn't matter which one you go with. You're getting a huge perfume. Remember, if you know fragrances from the past, think opium or poison. That level of 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 large of of largeness. I was going to say of opulence of of um, of size. Uh, it's a huge perfume. So it doesn't matter which one you go with. Uh, don't think this is going to be used for summer because I'll tell you what today. It is 75 degrees out in Texas, and this almost feels out of place. So before I start talking about the differences, that's the only downside that I can really think of is that it is limited wearability in that I feel like this really should be a cold weather fragrance. When I wore this last, it was 40 degrees and rainy in Texas, and um, you know I think that fits that, not necessarily rainy, but it fits that colder wet weather better. I felt almost a little bit out of place. I went to Costco today and wearing this um, in the in the warm spring day felt a little out of place. But that is literally the only downside to this perfume. Um, the other thing that I want to say, and I've said it before, but I will say it again. I'll continue to say it because I keep getting kind of new faces in the comments, watching my videos and stuff like that. And I'm very appreciative for the growth, although I'm not doing this for subscribers or anything like that. Um, but as a man, uh, do not be afraid to try some of these fragrances. This is completely unisex, just like opium is completely unisex to me. Um, and so I would say Ramsey from five or six years ago probably would have scoffed and went, I'm not going to try a woman's perfume. Um, so if that's you today, trust me. Um, try some of these fragrances from the past because if you don't you're missing out on half of the fragrance creations and you know a feminine fragrance yesterday could be a masculine fragrance today case in point um there i talked a little bit about poison there is a fragrance you may have heard of from the house of elaine delon called akitos and akitos almost won the brief to become poison it lost the brief, the current version of, of Poison became Poison, and, um, or Poison, if you will, someone in French corrected me the other day, um, and what happened was the house of Elaine Delon bought the exact same fragrance that was going to be Poison, and made it a Ketos and marketed it towards men, exact same fragrance, and so because it said for men, men wore it and, and loved it. Uh, but if it was poison for women, they would have said, oh, no way I'm going to wear that. That's a woman's perfume, right? So all of this gender in perfumery truly is marketing. Um, a flower is a flower. Benzoin is benzoin. Oak moss is oak moss, so forth and so on. So um, take my advice. If you're still one of the guys that has not at least sampled and tried some of these fragrances from the past, you are missing out. The other thing I have to say, because it's worth saying, is that some of the vintage perfume prices have skyrocketed. We're talking huge money, big, big money, um, and not from 40 to 80 bucks either. Some of the vintage masculines are two, three, 500, 800, 1,000. I saw Gucci Nobile the other day, for $700 on eBay. Um, so take my advice on some of this to heart and be somewhat expeditious. You know, there is a little bit of a sense of urgency. I'm not, I'm not going to be like some of the other big reviewers, and you know who you are if you ever watch this video. Uh, run, don't walk, run. Uh, and they're talking about like a, you know, Jaguar fragrance or something. Um, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say run, don't walk and buy this, but I will tell you to have a little bit of a sense of urgency because the prices on some of these women's perfumes are now starting to also creep up. Um, they're not Balenciaga pour homme. They're not Pat, Patu uh, pour homme. Uh, you know, it's not to that level yet, but understand that um, it is, it, it is beginning to start to creep up. And before these women's perfumes 
um, were kind of left out. I feel like the vintage hunters were kind of men going for vintage masculines. Now they're starting to realize that these are included in that group. So get some of this perfume, the, this kind of stuff, I don't think can be created today. I mean, look at the juice. There's a huge dose here. I'll go through the notes with you. Aldehydes in the top, bergamot, fruity notes, and coriander. And you do get this beautiful fruity aldehydic opening. And if you watched my first impression yesterday of um, Boss Spirit from 1989, another long discontinued fragrance, I said that the aldehydes in that opening, there was some green facets, there was uh, mint, tarragon, um, galbanum, stuff like that. It was very green in the opening. And I said that the aldehydes were almost like taking helium and putting it into a balloon and watching the opening kind of expand and blow up. If Boss Spirit is helium in a balloon, this is helium in a hot air balloon. This is in the sky, you know, you are being lifted off. The opening, I don't think I've ever smelled such aldehydes, to be honest with you. And then there are aldehydes that I actually struggle with. Um, some aldehydes I don't, it's like it doesn't comprehend with my brain. You know, I'm not, I'm not getting what the point is. Here, it fits perfectly into the fragrance. Um, and it is an oriental fragrance, okay? Uh, and oriental fragrances normally have heavy resinous base notes. And this one does as well. So what happens is as you get into the dry down, you hit the floral heart, which is carnation, old school carnation, beautiful carnation. I wish more fragrances used that note. Um, geranium, orris root, jasmine, rose, tuberose, and ylang ylang. And then there's a lovely note of this honeyed beeswax. And it feels, the honey in this almost feels like you've just, you know, taken a scoop of honey and just like, you know, let it slowly drip off of the spoon onto your skin. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. It's resinous, it's dark, and then you get to the main part of the fragrance, which is the base. You get benzoin, you get oak moss, real oak moss, not, you know, 0.01 if for compliance oak moss. No, there is a huge slug of oak moss in this. Um, musk, patchouli, uh, vetiver, frankincense, and civet. The civet is the secret ingredient. Uh, the civet is, the civet is the part that made me go, wow, because, you know, um, usually fragrances that are very loud and very large, opulent, let's say, big fragrances, uh, with lots of layers are not always, um, they, they are not always, uh, classy, let's say, like take, um, Fragrances like I mentioned, uh, Amouage's Interlude Man, right, from 2012. Um, there are people that just can't wear that because it's too much. It's too, you know, there, it, it, yes, it's beast mode. Yes, it lasts forever, but it's just too much, too much smoke, too much um, myrrh, too much, too, it's just too much for someone who is a fragrance connoisseur to smell all day. By about hour 12, you're sick of it, right? Well, the civet in this is what really makes this a masterpiece to me. And I do think this is a masterpiece uh, because the civet is so expertly blended uh, in a way where it mixes with the beeswax, it mixes with the benzoin, with the um, resinous notes. And it's done in one of the most elegant ways you could ever imagine. I could easily see somebody wearing this to the opera. It is that um, classy. It is, um, you know, it's really something where, uh, like today I wore it to Costco, like I said, and I, I felt like I was, I, it was out of place. Like this, this needs uh, either you sitting in your house, sitting on your chair, and just paying attention to the way it breaks down and just enjoying the beautiful fragrance, or going out somewhere nice. I mean, it, it literally has that vibe. Um, so the only thing I could ever say bad about this fragrance is it is a little bit, un, it's not so versatile. 
Uh, it's not meant for going to the grocery store. Although I, I wear my fragrances everywhere and, and I don't really care. Uh, and it's really not meant for spring summer. It's meant for fall and winter when it's colder, uh, which we don't have that much in Texas, which kind of makes me sad. Uh, but it does seem a little out of place in the hot weather. Those resinous notes, um, they, they need the cold. Okay. So what are the differences? Um, so at the start, what you get is you get that aldehydic fruit opening and, and you can definitely tell the fruits. Um, and the difference in the opening to me between the EDP on my left hand and the EDT on my right hand is the EDP, um, almost goes straight into those resinous base, those resinous mid and base notes faster. Okay. So the EDT, you get more of a open space feel. It feels like the aldehydes are more. Um, whereas you don't get as much of an aldehydic opening here in the EDP on my left hand. Um, the EDT almost feels like everything is sped up. Okay. So what I mean by that is it goes from first gear to second gear to third gear very quickly. Um, it goes through its transitions quicker, if that makes sense, at least today on my skin, that's what I've noticed. This, the EDP, really almost takes its time. You know, it stays at the top longer. It goes to the mid and stays longer. It goes to the base and stays. It's not as quick of a transition. Here you get the big aldehyde opening. Um, and like an EDT to EDP comparison, there are some generalities you could make that do hold true here. Uh, this probably, the EDT probably is a little bit more versatile. Um, this probably is a little bit more, you know, the Eau de Parfum is a little bit heavier because it has higher perfume concentration. Uh, but you also get some amped up florals in the Eau de Parfum, especially the iris. Um, and that may be a pro or it may be a con to some people because the amped up iris or orris root, if you will, um, the amped up orris gives this, it almost gives this um, powdery Play-Doh like feel. Okay. So iris is made to, you know, in a, in a, in a fragrance, iris gives off this uh, powderiness sometimes. Um, and here, it does make the fragrance a little bit more powdery, but it also, somehow the florals are highlighted here more as well. Um, and so you get a little bit more tuberose, you get a little bit more rose, you get a little bit more jasmine. If you don't like florals, if you're like my friend Rich Mitch and he doesn't like florals, I would say go for the EDT. That would be my recommendation. If you are somebody who loves florals and you live for florals, uh, or maybe I would even say you want something that is traditionally more feminine because of the increased florals and the increased powderiness from the iris and that play doughy feel, which I'm not sure where that comes from because um, I, if you would have made me guess, I would have said heliotrope, but there's no heliotrope listed in the note breakdown. So I don't know where that comes from. I'm guessing maybe it's just a mixture of the amped up iris and the beeswax kind of mixing together to give that resinous, you know, Play-Doh like feel in the mid. And then once you get into the base, the biggest difference in the base is that the Eau de Parfum feels like um, you get a little bit more incense. Okay, so there is an incense note. There's a frankincense note listed in both. But I don't get the frankincense as much in the Eau de Toilette as I do the Eau de Parfum. It feels like the frankincense is a little bit heavier and a little bit amped up here, a little bit more. And that's why I say this is even more made for cold weather. This may work on a day like today, although I'm really pushing it. But um, it was really the Eau de Parfum that I kept smelling when I was out in the sun. 
thinking, man, this may be a little bit much on a day like today. It was the eau de parfum kind of pushing off my skin. Um, and so I think the eau de toilette is um, probably the one that I prefer um, because I just think it's a little bit more versatile, which is not shocking. That's probably exactly what you expected me to say. Um, and that would actually be my guess had I never smelled both and made a, made an educated guess. I would say the Eau de Toilette is probably the one that, um, would be more versatile, a little bit easier to wear. And that's exactly what has happened. But, um, you get, uh, you get Teatro Alla Scala in both versions. I mean, it is, there is no fall off in quality in ingredients. Um, I said in the first intro or first impression video of this perfume that Roja Dove eat your heart out on this because it feels like they use the absolute highest quality ingredients. And that's the thing that's really blown me away with the house of Crezia. And I've discovered their house, um, kind of over time. It's not like I discovered Crezia and went, oh, I got to buy everything. No. I discovered something and went, wow, that's cool. And then, you know, months, a year later, I stumbled across something else and uh, tried it and realized, wow, that actually is, you know, good quality ingredients. And it's kind of just gone on like that. But now that I'm starting to accumulate more and more Crezia fragrances, I am, um, I am, I am really, re I'm realizing just uh, the level uh, and quality of juice. So, you know, they have moods. Womo, which is one of my favorite patchouli fragrances. They have um, Crazy Crezia, which starts with a K, Crazy Crezia. Um, and that, I believe, is a Dominique Ropion. And that is one of the most amazing Tonka bean fragrances I've ever smelled. It's a bit like uh, Obsession, but to me, it almost feels like high, even higher quality ingredients. Uh, and I'm not a big fan of Tonka. Uh, I mean, I have fragrances like Tonka Imperial, but Crazy Crezia blew me away. Um, and so the more I've kind of discovered from the house, Crezia Uomo, beautiful green uh, perfume for men, is, is when it, it came out in the 80s as well. Very close to a fragrance like One Man Show, but I prefer um, Crezia Uomo over One Man Show. So, you know, this um, DNA, this animalic Shifra DNA... Uh, it's a, it's really kind of an oriental, but it feels like a chifra to me. Um, it feels like a chifra oriental, kind of like um, MDCI chifra palatin feels like a chifra oriental fragrance to me, right? And so I'm glad that I have both. I I love wearing this. I am just um, I mean I'm just I've been eating my hand all day, smelling this, and 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 even though it's a little bit warmer. And I think it smells even better when it's colder. Uh, the, the quality of the ingredients, the, the joy of wearing a perfume that moves me like this, which very few fragrances um, are on this level. I mean, this is, um, this is another level of perfumery to me, which very few fragrances get to. I mean, this is, this is special stuff. And I've, I've said this before, I don't hype fragrances because I don't care. I get nothing out of it other than sharing my knowledge and love of perfumery with you guys. I'm not like some of the other reviewers that, um, you know, they're not going to get their free bottles if they say something mean or whatever it may be. That doesn't matter to me. So when I say something good about this fragrance, understand that uh, this is a long discontinued fragrance. Um, and there is no benefit to me to say something good about this other than I want to tell you guys my thoughts and be honest with you. Um, and so, uh, this, this review, I kind of got to thinking about it as I was, usually I have pages of notes, right? Look, I came up with a couple things because they really are very close. I don't think you can go wrong either way. I think if you twisted my arm, I would say, uh, go for the EDT first. If you have tastes like mine and, but if you like fragrances that have that, sticky resinous play-doh play like vibe like um for example i mentioned um the other day i did a first impression of civet de nuit uh which is the sultan pasha uh, a, re a russian atom collaboration in a spray form 
uh, for for the Aris Lodori brand. I said that almost had this Le Bleu type feel. If you like fragrances like that, I would probably tell you to go for the EDP, the Eau de Parfum. Um, but if you are someone like me or Rich Mitch, where you really are more into your vintage masculines, probably the EDT would, would suit you better. So that's just kind of my, my uh, initial thoughts. Um, and the other thing that kind of really struck me as I was doing this review, and I, I'll tell you a funny story, um, because there, there is a, there's a couple reviewers, if you will, that I really trust and look up to. When they say something, you know, I listen. One of them is Dana from A Nose Nose, and she did a review of this. And, um, you know, I put her way above me. I mean, if I'm here, I think she's here as far as knowledge and stuff like that goes. So I went on to um, YouTube today, and I was like, let me just kind of watch her talk about it a bit, because I like hearing her. She really gets the gears moving in my mind. Uh, and I typed in Tietro alla Scala Crezia in, in YouTube, and I went to go look, and my first impression video was the first one at the top, and I was like, that's not right. I'm supposed to be way down at the bottom. Um, so, as far as the channel itself goes over the last four months, to me, the first impression of Teatro Alla Scala is a special fragrance uh, review for me because it, it was the first, first impression. But it was also the first time that anyone, it, it, I mean, other people bought other things on, on, you know, my recommendation or what I've talked about. Uh, I talked, I've talked very well about Venezia by Creed, which is another one that some people bought and reported back that they absolutely loved it. But this was the first time that a whole bunch of people ran out and bought this. And I thought, wow, um, you know, it, it was almost like a little bit of a revelation to me. Um, and you know, some people might get power hungry on that, but for me, it, it was almost like a time where I could look inward and say, Hey, I've been given this gift, which all of these fragrances are a gift to a gift to me. Not that they were gifted to me. I paid for all of them, but I cherish all of them. And, um, you know, I get to wear them every day and talk about them every day and stuff like that. And I realize that, you know, I have to, you know, I have to take this seriously and do what's right. Um, and you know, that is, um, that's why I think this was one of the big turning points for my channel is it made me really realize how important this was because I have the, I have the ability to highlight a fragrance that, um, could be collecting dust on a pharmacy shelf somewhere in Europe or could be, you know, 20, 30 bucks on eBay and no one's grabbing it cause they don't know about it. And so, you know, those are the kind of fragrances that I really get the pleasure in uh, highlighting. It's a pleasure to talk about stuff like this. I mean, this is a this is a perfume lover's dream. And then, to top it all off, the fact that it honestly does move me, that, um, you know, this is what I want in my perfumes. I want something that's going to, um, you know, just completely blow me away, knock me off my chair, like I said at the opening. And this does that. So this probably wasn't the best review as far as, you know, the fragrance itself, but I hope I gave you at least enough to decide to grab one or the other, or both. I know Anuj from Enchante still has some bottles. I think he still has both versions, the EDP and the EDT. Um, and so while you still can at a decent price, if your taste is like mine, this is one to put on the list. And you don't have to put it on the unicorn list, like with Boss Spirit because these are pretty readily available still, which is shocking that you can get this kind of perfumery at 30 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever it is. Um, shocking, shocking. Um, this blows away $500,000 fragrances to me, some, you know, some of them. Um, so that's kind of my, uh, my, my take between the two. I think they're both full bottle worthy. Um, I do have a slight preference on the EDT, but the EDP, I can't wait to smell this in winter. I think this is going to be absolutely amazing. Um, so I'm, I'm really appreciative of everybody watching and sharing time with me. I love hearing your comments, uh, down below in the video. I learn more from you than you do from me. I've said that many a times, but it's very true. So, um, if you could tell me your thoughts about this, 
Uh, or if you plan on getting it, you know, when you do get it, report back and let me know what you think. Uh, I'm always a little bit worried about people buying off of my recommendation because not everyone's going to have the same taste. But um, if you're a fan of vintage perfumes, I, I think you'll, you'll really appreciate this one. This one is, um, this is a special fragrance because it's complex, but wearable. It's um, unique, but well blended. It's, it, it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, it has a valley in the middle of the fragrance. And on one side is all the things that fragrance lovers love, the complexity, the quality of the juice, the build, the blend. And on the other side, it's, it's wearable. Um, it is, you know, it's not so, the civet is not so animalic and dirty like Koros that you have to really think and worry about where would you wear it. It is, you know, it's there. You can tell that there's some, a little bit of animalic funk underneath, but it's, it's almost like it's hidden. You know, it's, it's well blended and hidden under this beautiful resinous, um, blur of honey. And, and I love animalic honey and and benzoin and oak moss and all that good stuff so um check this out i think that this is a hidden gem i think that it is well undervalued uh for what it is and um let me know what you think i hope you've appreciated this i've been waiting a long time to do this uh comparison video and um thanks for sharing some time with me today and i'll see you again tomorrow with another review bye guys